Wingert. I uh, am so pleased to be here to talk with Derek um, about the four temperaments. Uh, I staged this ballet for the Dance Theater of Harlem. My name is Daphne Lee. I'm originally from Raleigh, New Jersey, and I currently reside in Brooklyn, New York. I've been with Dance Theater of Harlem for two seasons now, going into my third. Um, but I've been affiliated with the organization since I was 12 years old. I'm Susan Walters. I'm a pianist with the New York City Ballet and a sometime pianist with Dance Theater of Harlem, which I'm very excited about. Four Temperaments by George Balanchine. I think the jumping off point for him was what Hindemith said, which is that it's a, a, a theme with four movements. It was thought to relate back to the uh, humors, the four humors or the four temperaments. The first temperament movement is melancholy. You've got sanguinic. You have phlegmatic. You have, and you have choleric. I don't know why I'm so attracted to it physically, but I love how it was one of those rebel pieces. It was a piece that, you know, when you thought about the grand classicism of ballet and then all of a sudden you see hip thrusting, you see these different partnering moves. Um, it, it allows me to really think about what this piece was about. It's about, I, I would imagine a little bit uh, that Balanchine just took that as a jumping off point. Uh, intellectually, but there's no, there's no real temperament that we are taught to think about when we're, when we're doing these. It's much more um, musical. I, I think all of Balanchine's work really goes back to the music and, and that. And this uh, ballet uh, has been dear to my heart. I spent my entire career at New York City Ballet dancing the phlegmatic section. Paul Hindemith is the composer. It evokes a lot of emotion. It's mystery. Um, I feel very mysterious. I also feel almost a little bit empowered sometimes by the music. And that's your riam, So that idea of making a movement that resonates like music resonates. Is you know, this is, it's not your full orchestra and piano, it's just strings and piano, so it's only Violins, violas, cellos, and basses, and piano. He wrote this beautiful piece because George Balanchine commissioned it. And um, together they put together this great work of art that we now have, is it 50 years later? I, even longer, I guess. There's always a practicality to it. It was he wanted some music to play with his friends. But some people thought his music was ugly for a while because it sounded like this. <laughs> Instead of this. Dun, 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 like it just, it, it gets you going, but then there's other moments when you're seeing choleric and there's a, pyre, a fire, excuse me, and a fierceness about the music. He starts the ballet with the simplest of gesture and gesture. You almost can sing it. Arm and arm. You're hearing the pianist just go ham on that on that piano and it, it triggers a lot for me. It's like it's saying something and it's almost as if the music is telling you what to do. Two, it was in the Guggenheim. I've always wanted to dance in that space. I had never played there before. It was quite thrilling. I got very nervous though. But to be able to dance with my partner Dylan and look up and just see rows of people and it's a pristine white museum space. I was, I almost had an outer body experience. Like I forgot I was on stage. Because it's such a giant platform in terms of New York City. City ballet people were there, my, my former colleagues, my former teachers. It was, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I think Dance Theater of Harlem was extremely ready, able and willing to do that. It was a delight to bring everyone together in that way. As a body of protest, you know, doing those kind of works like Balanchine or just being in ballet, I'm making a huge statement. The moment I put on the leotard and tights that were, and I'm in a tutu, what does that say? That's another thing. When I was working with your company, I asked about a, a tempo and, and you guys showed me the tempo with your bodies and I had never 
and the dancers showed me the tempo with their bodies before, and that was enlightening to me too. We have to also respect and be proud to know that our work um, or his work was influenced by us. That means I have every right to perform it and that I have every right to share that. That's exciting. That's what's so great about Dance Theater of Harlem is we all bring what we bring and it all gets better. And we're all included. It was just beautiful and pure. And then the live pianist. I mean, it was such, like I said, it was one of those performances that I will forever hold on to. Each time, you have to, I think, find a new way to approach it. Ellen Sheen, to me, is all confidence. Be open, listen. It's a knowing of self. And if you have those things about you in all other areas of dance, then you can be balancing. Uh, it's all about the music. The Dance Theater of Harlem was very closely linked with all the balancing works from Serenade, um, Fortis, etc. So to know that it's been done. Tell everyone, dancer, musician, everyone, talk to each other, completely communicate to each other how you feel about this music. Relish the fact that you get to learn it and, and work on it. It's really an honor. It's an honor to teach it and it's an honor to have done it. Um, I, I, I keep growing from it. It's in our history, it's in our ballet DNA, it's in our actual DNA. So just to go out there and have fun and know that you can.